Peace, everybody. How are y'all doing? This is Fasting is Life, and I, I am your host. I am back again after a while. I know you guys have missed me. <laughs> so, yeah, I hope uh, you guys are having a wonderful day. Right now, as I'm recording this news, it's around 6.43 p.m. here in Houston. And I hope wherever you are, when you hear this message, I hope. Uh, it brings you edification and uh, brings you awareness of what's going on. If you're new to my channel, I really appreciate it for you stopping by. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. So that way, when I post something interesting, you get a notification. Make sure to hit that bell. <laughs> and share to stream this video. Maybe someone out there that you know who cares about this kind of topic will appreciate it. So as you can look in the screen, you see something very interesting, right? It's an interesting collage that I made <laughs> a few minutes ago. <laughs> oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Today's news is gonna be very, very interesting. As you can see, the title says, football coach force Hebrew Israelite student to eat pork and you can see i got a little pepperoni in the background there and you see the little piglet <laughs> piggy 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 oink, oink, oink. Mm -hmm. and the image on the far left on the square that's the football coach who forced a young student to eat a pepperoni pizza mm -hmm. and the gentleman on the uh, on the left side of the picture of the coach is the family's lawyer, and that's his father with the who is bald headed on the far right, wearing the was a black sweater. As you can see in the bottom, it says Gilbert is sitting next to Kenny Walker, the player's father. So what I'll do is I'll show you certain articles. That uh, uh, I heard this news, uh, I believe two days ago, right? And I was thinking about. I'm like, you know what? I I really need to make a news about this. Like, this is something. I'm like, yeah, I I gotta cover this. For those of you who know my my content, you know, I cannot let this slip by. <laughs> oh yes, all right. So before I can get into the articles. I just want to emphasize on the topic that I keep telling you guys about how the media manipulates our mind. I'm going to show you the power of the media, right? I'm going to show you certain articles and certain phrases, how you may have the media sharing the same article from one place to another, but then they tweak it, right? So the information, you know, it, it's, it brings awareness, but I'm going to show you how the media plays when it comes to certain, you know, reporting certain news, right? Because the media has records, right? When it comes to cases like this, how they were reported, right? So I want to prepare you guys. Get ready, set, go. All right. One second. Let me bring in uh, the share screen so you guys can see. All right. Let me remove this picture. All right. Let me emphasize. Let me make it bigger so you guys can see. All right. And this article is from the Cleveland Cleveland Jewish News. Title, head coach, six assistants, lose jobs after forcing student to eat pork. Now, this is from their news, right? This is the, the headline of the news. This is one news. But the reason why I'm going to actually read this news, and this was written by uh, Alex Kruchik. Kuchik sounds a, a Eastern Europe European name, and uh, this was posted twelve years, uh, twelve hours ago, right? Now, 
this news first I saw it at CNN. CNN article and here CNN, their article, uh, which uh, I can show you in a few seconds. Let me see. This is the title, right? So let me show you uh, the, let me close this one. Let me make it invisible. And let me show you the uh, CNN version. Because what I'm I'm trying to show you guys is show you how the media manipulates how it reports news, right? So you heard it says you know, the coach forces student to eat, right? That was theirs. Now look at CNN's news, right? Okay, all right. Let me show you now CNN's uh, headline on this article, right? Watch this. You see it? It says eight. High school football coaches suspended over allegations they made a Hebrew Israelite player eat a pizza that had contained pork. <laughs> you see, you see what, what, where I'm going with this, right? All right? Okay. Uh, let me hide it again let me show you another news article right same thing right same same news information and uh, let's see okay and this one is from the jerusalem post right it's a israeli uh website hold on one second all right uh, let's see let me show you the headline let's see you guys see it? It says Jewish student forced to eat pork after missing football training session. You see how, how the news changes from one place to the other? You see? Huh? And if you scroll down, it states a football coaches have been placed on administrative leave after allegedly forcing a Jewish athlete who keeps kosher to eat pork as punishment for missing a weight training session, according to CW News affiliate Cleveland 19. So, now, you see, you see what I'm referring to? Here, they're calling him a Jewish student. Now, I'll put it this way. I'm like, you know, this kind of news, it's, I'll say it's important to report it, right? Because it needs to bring awareness. But there is a reason why I'm showing you the different articles from different places and the emphasis on words. Well, what's the saying? Words have meaning. Words have power, right? Now, if I were to tell you this news when I say Jewish student, let me ask you this. Who will be the first person that comes in mind when you hear the word Jewish? Huh? I'll show you what most of the people, when they hear the word Jewish, this is what they think. Hold on one second. All right. Are you ready for this? This is what, when they hear Jewish, this is who they first think of. Am I right? Am I right? Right? When the people hear the word Jewish, this is what they think. They think for people who follow the uh, Judaism religion and who uh, dress in black and they tend to look Caucasian looking like this, right? And this is a, this is just a fact, you know? And uh, the, the uh, I say these are usually, they refer to them more orthodox because not all uh, Jewish uh uh, followers of Judaism dress like this. You have uh, 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 what is it? Um, people who are Jewish, they don't dress like this. They'll be just regular folks. And they may be Caucasian looking, but they don't uh, do these uh, the locks and all that stuff because, you know, even here in, in the States, I know uh, fellow Americans who are Jewish, but they don't dress like this, right? But we talk about when it comes to mainstream, when you hear the word Jewish, what do you think of? You think either rabbi Wearing a kufi like this, right? You think of a, a rabbi wearing this, 
oh, you think of this, right? Like it's, we talk about mainstream. So again, when I showed you guys the uh, picture, this picture earlier, right? It say Hebrew Israelites, right? But then when you look at this news from the Jerusalem Post, what does it say? Jewish student forced to eat pork. Now, people are like, well, actually, they're reporting the news. But I'm like, yes. But I'm also showing you how words are lost in translation and how things can change from one place to the other. On one part, they say students. Another one says Hebrew Israelites. Another one says Jewish. So which is it? Right? Now, the first article that I wanted to stick with the reason why I wanted to start with the article, uh, and I'll, I'll come back to this one later on, the reason is the article has more details than almost the rest. Like, I'll read the CNN news, but the reason why I wanted to focus more on the Cleveland Jewish news, they actually had more detail uh, about the incident. And I'm going to read, uh, basically, I'm going to read the entire uh, Cleveland, uh, um, uh, was a Jewish, was it the Cleveland Jewish, um, news more because it has more detail. So be patient with me guys. One second. Let me put it up. Yeah. I, I want to make sure you guys, uh, <clears throat> you get the, the best, uh, reporting. This, this, this news, when I, I heard it, I was like, man, what a time we're living in, right? It's amazing that, you know, this kind of news will pop up. And I was like, yo, right? Okay, let me open it up so you guys can read with me. All right, one. All right, so on the uh, Cleveland Jewish News, the headline say, stated, head coach, Six assistants lose jobs after forcing students to eat pork. Let me go down quick. The Canton City School District anonymously voted 5-0 June 3rd not to rehire McKinley Senior High head coach, was a head football coach, Marcus Watley, and six of his assistants after they forced a player to eat a pepperoni pizza as a punishment for missing practice. Now you see how they highlighted this one, right? When I click on it, what does it do? It, it takes you to the previous, the same news article, right? So the same guy had been talking about it, but I'm going back once again. Yeah. Uh, I'm going back to the, the actual news. So. I'm just showing you that there was already a link. So as more information came out, the news kept updating it, right? So whenever you get your own time, you can go and actually read it. But let me focus on this one. It says, the school board made the decision. <laughs> the school board made the decision during a special meeting, which included a one hour and 23 minutes executive session to discuss the fate of the coaches. Assistant, assistant coaches Cade Brody, Joshua Grimsley, Romeo Harris, Frank McLeod, uh, Zachary Sweat, and Tyler Hatcher also will not have their extracurricular contracts renewed after the 2020 and 2021 school year. They have been unpaid administrative leave so they get still getting paid you know they're not gonna do their job but they're still gonna get paid look at that huh that pay attention like <clears throat> i'm going to detail i'm not gonna say nothing but i'm gonna read news hopefully you're paying attention to those little details that i'll be pointing out right now keep in mind what i showed you earlier when you look at the original picture that i showed you about the quote-unquote hebrew israel students but then I showed you the other articles where it say Jewish. So just hold on. Stay with me. Quote, 
The Canton City School District holds our coaches and general staff to the highest professional and ethical standards. End quote. John uh, Rinaldi, president of the Canton City School District, said during the meeting, quote, Anything short of these standards is unacceptable and will not be permitted. Moving forward, our mission as a school district is to inspire competent, creative, and open-minded learners. Our athletic programs play a big part in this mission, end quote. Rinaldi said the athletic department will reinforce the district behavior, uh, behavior expectations as they pertain to their coaching staff before each ses uh, season begins in order to safeguard student well-being. Now, now, here, here we go. Here we go now. The 17-year-old player is a black <laughs> Hebrew Israelite. <laughs> I Listen, guys. The 17-year-old player is a black. Hebrew Israelite. Keyword black. <laughs> now, now you see why I had to kind of give you the different headlines. What if they would just say he's a Hebrew Israelite, right? Because if you, if you think about it, there is no such thing as Hebrew Israelites in the Bible. Hebrew was the name that became associated with the children of Eber, who uh, he's like one of the ancestors of Abraham, right? Because Abraham would say Abraham the Hebrew. And then that title was later on, you know, centuries was applied to his descendants who were called the Israelites, right? They, they, were, they not only called them Israelites when they became a nation, but they were, they were referred to as Hebrews, right? When they were in Egypt, right? Remember? If you read the book of Exodus. So the word Hebrew Israelite is a term that society has imposed to people of quote unquote African descent who are uh, well, Amer here in America they would call black people or African Americans who uh, through the Bible, right? They realize that, hey, uh, the Bible talk about these people called Israel. So uh, according to what it says, that's us because we fit the narrative of the Bible. So, we are the Israelites. So Israelites is not a religion. It's a nation of people just like French, Spaniards, you know, Mexican, Canadian. So Israelite is the name of a people, right? Now, when they say black, so are, are they implying that Israelites can be Asian? They can be all races, right? So. I'm, you know, I don't want to get too deep there, but I'm just showing you how the news is being portrayed. On one news, it says Hebrew Israelites. But here in the Cleveland uh, Jewish news, they say black Hebrew Israelites. And look what it says after. It says, let me make sure you guys can see it clearly. Uh, let me highlight it because uh, on the screen it probably looks small. It says, This religion forbids the consumption of pork or any pork residue on foods. Wait. Hebrew. Wait, hold on. Are they stating that black Hebrew Israelite is a religion? Since when? Now, for those of you who probably don't know what the, you know what the hell I'm saying, what the hell is what is Hebrew is what black? Is. For those of you unaware, I'm basically showing you how the media tends to was it convey or spread a narrative that the quote unquote person that they're talking to have nothing to do or never suggested that. 
you know, just like they say the media, they're not going to ask the person or talk to the, the person they're talking to. They're going to quote unquote create a narrative. And by the time that the actual person that's involved in the narrative comes to clear things up, it's already too late. Why? Because the damage has been done. So no, black, there's no religion per se called Israel, Hebrew Israel. No, that's a title that governmental officials gave to an organization. You know, because if you think about it, most of the people who are labeled Hebrew Israelites were once Christians. So Christian was a religion, but black, there is no quote unquote religion called black. So just to clear things up, when people say, oh, that religion, the black Israelites, that's not what the Israelites labeled themselves. They were labeled just like in the Bible tells you, followers of Christ, whom the word called Jesus. The Roman, the governments, they started calling them Christians in Antioch. They were first called Christians in Antioch. It tells you in the book of Acts, chapter 13. It tells you that the Jews who follow Christ, or the, in Judaism, they call him Yeshu. The government put a label on those people it, because they were a new sect. You had the Pharisees, Sadducees. The uh, Essenes, they were different, quote unquote, sects, but they all were of one nation, Judeans. So, this new movement from Christ, they were looking for, and they said, What can we call these people? Oh, we get it. They call them to Christ, let's call them Christians. So, what has happened is, just like today in our society, when someone identifies as an Israelite, the government has labeled them black Hebrew, if you are of quote-unquote African-American uh, descent. So let's move on, right? Let's focus on, you know, the topic at hand, but I'm putting these thing, little things right here because like I say, you can hear from someone else reporting on this, but hey, I'm like, I'm so glad I got this news in my hands because I'm going to break it down. I'm going to break it piece by piece. So that those of you who are aware of this thing can understand why I'm going in details about this. And for those of you who are ignorant, maybe you might learn something new today. Let's continue. It says, Edward Gilbert, the attorney representing the rising senior and his family, told the Cleveland News, was it the Cleveland Jewish News, on June 2nd, the player who has not been identified missed a voluntary workout on May 20th while nursing a shoulder injury. Following the day off and the weekend, Watley and the assistant coaches told him to go to the gym and eat an entire pepperoni pizza in front of about 35 teammates, according to Gilbert. 35, 5, you know, 15, 6, you know, wink, wink. <laughs> All right, let me keep uh, reading the news. Uh, let me put the picture, right? So you guys can, you know, feel the mood, right? Pepperoni pizza, huh? <laughs> yeah, you guys, you guys, uh, you know, get salivate while I talk about pepperoni pizza. Hmm? Yes. All right, hold on. Let's see. It says, continue. The player had previously made it known that he does not eat pork and the team had accommodated that previously during team meals. So what it's showing you that the young man had already had a history that his teammates and his coach knew about his beliefs. And they always made it, okay, you know, he doesn't eat this. You know, like you go somewhere, they be like, oh, I don't eat, let's say I don't eat chicken, so they're not going to give you chicken. They'll be like, okay, what do you eat? Oh, you eat, uh, was it hot dog? Okay, right? I'm just giving that as an example. So they already knew that he doesn't like this. So I guess to this coach, he got mad at him and decided, oh, you know, since he doesn't like to eat pork, I'm going to punish him and use his First Amendment right and violate his First Amendment right, you know, the freedom of religion, and force him to break his beliefs, right? So it says, according to Gilbert, the player repeatedly at least, quote unquote, at least 10 times during this incident that he cannot eat pork to remove pepperoni before eating it, but pork residue still remain. Now, listen to the, the part of the story that's, that could be disturbing to some of y'all. 
when we talk about hazing. It says, during all of this, coaches and teammates were yelling at the player to finish the pizza because they were told they will all have to do extra workout if he did not finish, according to Gilbert. You know what this reminds me of? You guys remember the movie called Full Metal Jacket? Boot camp training where there was one a soldier uh, who was fat and he always ate and he always made his friend in trouble. And one night they beat him with soaps. Uh, they put soap inside the, the towel and then they beat him. <laughs> you guys remember that movie? Yeah, this kind of sounds like it. In a form of hazing. So just, I mean, imagine a young man psychologically, right? You, you're breaking the laws of your God, right? You believe. He's probably like emotional, nervous, scared, you know, out of his mind because he, in his mind, he's like, I'm breaking God's law, you know, depending on how he was raised. So he's like, I'm going against my God. I'm going against my God. I, I don't, you know, I love this team, but I don't want to lose this team. And then all of his team is like, come on, man. You know, we, for those of us who've been in sports, we know how, you know, they would be like, come on, man. Go do, you can do it. You can do it. Hurry up. You're making us look bad. Come on, eat that, eat that swine, man. Eat that swine pizza. Come on, eat it. Come on, man. Stop, stop being a, you know, stop being a bee. Come on, man. Don't be a sissy. Eat that swine. Come on, man. Come on. F forget that, you know, F religion, F religion, you know, fudge religion. Yeah, yeah. Come on, come on. Yeah. L look at you, man. You know, the, I bet you the coach was like, look at you, man. Come on. Don't be a crybaby. It's just it's just pepperoni. Just remove some of it. Huh? You know, I'm telling you. I wasn't there, but I, I can assume this is how you play it out. I, I know some of you are laughing. You, like, we all know, for those of you, you know, who've been in sports, you know when motivation comes, right? You know, and let me show you the picture of the coach so you can have in mind. This is him. Co uh, coach Marcus Watley. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And, you know, young men, you know, look up to coaches, right? You know, they're supposed to be lead model. And now you have this coach teaching the young men who are looking up to him that, hey, you know, you, you can break someone's faith. You, you, you can use his, uh, uh, a person's uh, religious uh, laws against him. You know, you can, you can terrorize him hmm? with the fear, you know, you can use it against him. I mean, this is this is what we're teaching young men this day, huh? You know, pizza, swine, oink oink. <laughs> You're gonna break the laws of your God, boy. Eat that swine. Ah. It's delicious, isn't it? See, you're not gonna die eating a, a little bit of pepperoni in your pizza. <laughs> All right, let's continue. And he says, uh, the Canton Police Department is looking into this situation as a possible criminal act, as well as the investigation by the school system, according to Gilbert. Now, remember earlier when I told you that if it was any other people, they would call it what? Hate crime. But they're calling this criminal crime. It was a criminal act. Right? See, twist on words, man. Just, just, just stay with me. It says, in response to this incident and prior to the meeting, James Pash, the Anti-Defamation League Cleveland Regional Director, made a statement via Twitter that said, quote, suspending the coaches who reportedly forced a student to eat pork in violation of his religious beliefs is a good first step, but more important steps are needed to start healing for the victim and school community. No student should be forced to violate his religious beliefs. It is outrageous, unacceptable, and unconstitutional. Our office has reached out to the Canton City School District to offer our resources, end quote. And you know what? I would like to congratulate the, uh, uh, was it Mr. James Pash, the Anti-Defamation League, uh, Cleveland. Because, like I said, <clears throat> the media, we can't rely on the media to be fair when it comes to reporting certain news. So, you know what? I'll, I'll shout out to the Anti-Defamation League because the when you look, go to the website, they talk about their for discrimination, not only for uh, 
people of uh, who are Israelis or Jewish, you know, but any anybody who's victim of you know bigotry and hatred, right? So shout out to them to actually touch on this because, like I say, uh, you know, if you're for justice, it's not just gonna be justice for a few. You got you gotta be justice for all, right? What well, say liberty and justice for all, right? It doesn't say liberty and justice for some. So shout out to the uh, uh, Cleveland Anti Defamation League. And let me finish this article. It says McKinley Athletic Director Antonio Hall will serve as the interim head coach for the 2020, uh, 2021 football season. Hall is a graduate of McKinley, as well as having played in a National Football League and Canadian Football League. So there's that for this uh, uh, article from the Cleveland Jewish News, right? So <clears throat> I showed you one. Now let me show you the... Um, the CNN version, right? How he read. I know it's taking a bit longer, but I, I've got to cover this, guys. Like, I, I want to show you the power of media and how news reporting can change from one place to the other, right? So let me share the uh, CNN. Was it the greatest name in news, right? Cartoon News Network. <laughs> uh, let me let, remove the image. The swine picture up there <laughs> all right let's see all right let's read titles the cnn news article right by anna sterla eight high school football coaches suspended over allegations they made a hebrew israelite player eat a pizza that had contained pork it says eight high school football coaches in canton ohio ohio it's always ohio have been suspended while police investigate allegations that they force a Hebrew Israelite player. See, CNN, they didn't say black. Huh? They didn't say Jewish. They say Hebrew Israelite player. Hmm? But I'll tell you, you want to know why they say Hebrew Israelite? Because that's the label. They label people who believe they are Israelites. They could have just say an Israelite player. Right? But carry on. That had, I said to eat a, I said they forced a Hebrew Israelite player to eat a pizza that had that previously had pork on it, despite knowing his beliefs forbade him from eating it. Police and the student's lawyer told CNN. The 17-year-old student who hasn't been named, is a rising senior at Canton McKinley High School. I'm stopping that moment. You know what? If he was a 17-year-old who would have committed crime, let's say robber or something, they would have named him. Why not name this young victim? You know, he's a rising star. Why not put his name out there so we know who he is and go congratulate him, you know, for standing for what he, he believes in, you know? Give him some high fives or whatever. But let me carry on. Where he was an offensive lineman on the football team. After skipping an earlier weightlifting session because of an injury, the team's coaches told him to eat an entire pepperoni pizza as punishment, right? You know what? I, I will add to this. They not only force him to eat swine, they force him to perform gluttony. Because gluttony is against the most high, right? Because according to the scripture, it says you're supposed to eat in moderation. And you eat when you're hungry. Forcing someone to eat against their will is glut. Is, it's like you're forcing him to be a glutton because a glutton eats even when he's full, right? <laughs> That's just my two cents in this, into the story. All right. It says, while his teammates were forced to carry heavy weights, this as the exercise are running. So if you even you look at his story, they know they didn't just bully this young uh, innocent man. They bully his teammates too. They coerce his teammates to look at him in a bad way. So <clears throat> this is a whole like you you this this can of worm is so huge. Like there's so many aspects where you can look at it, right? Not only they they use this young man 
to be looked down upon by his teammate, therefore bringing, lowering his uh, confidence, affecting him uh, psychologically because when they're going to be in classroom and other classes outside of football, just think, imagine the rumors, the how they're going to treat him, the pressure, the peer pressure. He's a teenager. Like, just imagine all of that stuff, right? And it says, uh, next paragraph, the teenage reminded that the head coach, hmm, wow, the teenage reminded the head coach multiple times that he did not eat pork like we read earlier so the young man was saying i can't eat it i can't eat it the student previously told coaching staff multiple times that he was a hebrew israelite and did not eat pork because of his religion the attorney added so in in a way i actually like uh how seeing they say he was hebrew and says according to his religion so they're not associating hebrew israelite as a religion they're just saying that he was a Hebrew Israelite because of his religion that he couldn't eat it, right? But they didn't they didn't say that Hebrew Israelite is a religion. No, they didn't. So I, I kind of like how they, they word it here. Uh, let's continue. Uh, it says we uh, the police is saying uh, the Canton Police Department was contacted yesterday by the school system to make a report for the alleged possible hazing incident. Police Chief Jack Angelo told CNN, quote, we are currently investigating and our results will be turned over to the Canton City Prosecutor Office for a determination of any charges. Superintendent Jeff Talbert issued a statement on the district's website Wednesday saying in part that the school initial investigation into the incident has concluded and that disciplinary uh, discipline will follow, says... The investigation found that the identified coaches engaged in actions that constituted inappropriate, demeaning, and divisive behavior in a misguided attempt to instill discipline in the student athletes. Talbert said, quote, this behavior will not be tolerated and further disciplinary measures for staff, which has not yet been determined, will follow. The student is seeking to be transferred to another school after the traumatic episode and has had to seek therapy, Gilbert told CNN. Quote, you look at coaches as role model. Trust has been violated here. So, again, like I said, this is what happens, man. You know, this is what happens. And that's the lawyer, Gilbert, that, that was talking to CNN, you know. And uh, <clears throat> let me read you another article. So w- what I've done is I'm I'm basically showed you the different sites how they reported it. There is also another website called Hip Hop Wire. It says high school football coach is suspended for forcing player to eat pork. And when you look at it, uh, you know, let's see. On this website, they don't really mention, they, they don't say anything about his, uh, they, didn't, they don't mention if he's a Hebrew Israel or nothing. They just say that uh, force one of his players to eat pork against his religious belief as punishment. And uh, yeah, it, and it's a short article. So on this website, Hip Hop Wire, they don't mention him as being a Hebrew Israelite. They don't mention it. And then when you go to another website, a news article uh, from Washington Post, they don't mention on the title. It just says high school football coaches placed on leave after forcing player who can consume pork to eat pepperoni pizza. And on this website, the first paragraph, they said, force a 17-year-old player who is a Hebrew Israelite and cannot consume pork. So on their website, they call him Hebrew Israelites, right? Now, when I go to the Times of Israel, that's another good website if you want to uh, catch news regarding what's going on in Israel and the other side of the world. That, that's another good website. I've, I've, I've written articles from them too. Their title says, Hebrew Israelite student in Ohio forced to eat pork after missing practice. So... 
uh, on their title, they say Hebrew Israelite. They don't say black. But the key word is most people, when they hear the word Hebrew Israelites, guess who they're thinking of? Let me show you. They're thinking of the brothers here. Okay. The brothers here. The brothers here in the street preaching. And some of the brothers here. Right? So that's that's what most people when they hear Hebrew Israelites. Now <clears throat> I went to all these different websites to show you uh how the news are reported, right? Now here's another website called Jewish Business News, and the title says American black <laughs> American black Hebrew Israelite forced to eat pork by high school coach. And then when you read the article, it says a Hebrew Israelite a high school football player was forced to eat pork. Da 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 da. Basically, just repeating what I read. And um, now the second part of the article, they talk about. A, a, a sect of Israelites who went to Demona, Israel, right? Now, they don't understand that just because someone says they're an Israelite, whom the government call Hebrew Israelite, doesn't mean that all of them are one. No, it's just an identity, right? It's just an identity, but just because they have the same identity doesn't mean it, it just it's like saying that everyone who's quote unquote Jewish believes the same thing. No, you have Orthodox Jews, you have uh, liberal Jews, you have different kind of Jews, uh, like Jewish people, right? Who who have different beliefs. You have some Jewish people who believe in abortion. You have some Jewish people who don't believe in abortion. So the whole thing is, I'm just showing you how the media in different outlets can change the narrative, even if they're telling the same story. You see what I'm saying? That's the whole point now. I knew it took forever <laughs> because it's I really wanted to dissect this news. But now I'm going to get deeper, you know. We're going to get into the rabbit hole. You see, this incident that you've just heard from this news about the young man, you know, the young football man. And let me show you a picture of the high school and that's him the coach right there that I took this picture from their website. So that's the school uniform and all that. Now, the re you know, this is not new, uh, this incident that, that has happened. You see, when I tell people the Bible is not just a religious book, it's a historical book, prophetic book, allegories and everything. There, is once, there was once upon a time, thousands of years ago, when, uh, the, when Alexander the Greek, you know, in, uh, you know brought, brought to the world the... The Greek Empire, right? And he died and his kingdom got split into four parts. And the kingdom of Judea, right, was invaded by the Greeks. And they brought in their customs and their religion and they tried to force the, the Judeans or what people call Jews, you know, according to the Bible, to basically forsake their customs and basically adopt Hellenist customs right now <clears throat> and just to put in parentheses you, you, the whole uh, football sports sports who brought who gave sports the greeks the romans right so don't be surprised it's there's a lot of ritualistic stuff that when it comes to these kind of sports right that people play that you know parents are there just you know the whole thing this coach did it's it's no coincidence. I'm about to show you the Bible. The Bible is amazing, right? It's amazing. Now, there is a book called the Book of Maccabees. Okay? Book of Maccabees. It talks about a story, you know, where... Let me share the screen so that way you see what I, I'm referring to. There was a time where a family... They were put in a position by the government, the Greek government, that not only government, but you had Jews, Judeans, Israelites, who basically sided with the enemy. 
they were like, hey, you know what? Just do as you say, you know, do this, right? So they were told to, <laughs> to what? To eat swine. Let me show you. Let me show you. Here's a passage, right? In the book of Maccabees. I wanted to show you. Let me see. I got to put the pepperoni. All right. <laughs> okay. In 2 Maccabees chapter 7, verse 1, he says, It came to pass also that seven brethren with their mother were taken and compelled by the king against the law to taste swine flesh and were tormented with scourges and whips. So this worker in the Bible talks about there was once upon a time King Antiochus, you know, he was a Greek. He took over uh, Judea, began to rule over it, and he set rules and tried to force the Judeans to forget the laws, uh, the dietary laws, and adopt Greek customs or Hellenistic customs. And if you didn't, you were beaten, tortured, and sometimes killed. Oh, they killed some of your family members to force you to taste wine. Why? Because if you do it, you're going to be an example to others. So this thing that happened, it's not new. The Bible already talked about it. Right? And uh, let me show you another passage. Uh, let's see. Second Maccabees, right? Because what happened was... <clears throat> You know, the government, they realized, they said, well, you know, these, these Judeans, these Jews are relentless, you know, when it comes to their religion, you know. So let's use their most respected man to break the law so that, you know, as an example, the people will follow. So they took a high priest, a leader. This is the passage, right? His name was Eliezer. They made him. He was an old man, aged. And they basically, this is what they told me. They say, well, look, we're going to tell you, uh, you know, you can eat, you know, let's say uh, lamb, right? But you're going to tell the people, right, that you're eating swine so that, you know, you can trick them to start eating pig. You know, I, I, you know, we know you're so faithful in your customs. Just, just, just do as you say. We, we're going to take care of you, you know? You, you, you're gonna be our boy, right? So he says, he says, Eliezer, one of the uh, uh, principal scribes, an aged man and of a well favored countenance, was constrained to open his mouth and to eat swine's flesh. <laughs> and uh, he, you know, and I tell you, on this particular story, he says what? But the first, uh, you know, I'm not showing it, but if you have in your own time, read the whole chapter. He says, but he choosing rather to die gloriously than to live stained with such an abomination, spit it forth and came to his own accord to the torment. Meaning he chose like torture me, right? You know, huh. so why don't, the reason why I'm showing you, here's another passage, right? This is, this is where the young men, right? The young men who refuse to eat swine. I'll show you the, the reference. People say, well, where does in the Bible say it's not to eat swine, right? Okay, here you go. One second. Let me show you why. Uh, where in the Bible says not to eat pepperoni. <laughs> there is a reason why the Most High told these people. Like, not the Creator, the Most High, the High, you know, Zambi, we call him Zambi. He doesn't tell you something to do for a reason. He knows everything. So if he tells you, don't do it, there's a reason why. He's not stupid. You know, he's the creator. He made everything. So he knows what's good and what's bad. Right? In Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 8, he says, And the swine, because he divideth the hoof, yet cheweth not the cud, it is unclean unto you. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, nor touch their dirt carcass. And there are many reasons also why the Bible says you can't even eat um swine there is a reason health reasons and what i'll do is uh i'll make a separate video going into detail why you shouldn't eat uh, pork you know 
People re- don't understand why you have a lot of diabetic, cancer on the rise, and all this stuff. There are many reasons, but you know what? I don't want to spoil it because uh, I've been on this video for too long. So save it for next time uh, for you guys. So, yeah, I wanted to report on this news. I was like, I got to, I got to, you know, swine, it's unclean unto you. And I show you how the news changes from one place to the other when it comes to reporting right and i chose one article to basically read and speak on the subject and you know you know the saying says what well, all kinfolk and kinfolk this is what happened you know I, you know i don't want to get into the whole racial thing but look the coach is of african-american descent and look how he was treating to a young man who was of his own quote-unquote skin folk Look how he was treating him. To tell you, people, weakness and goodness is not because of your skin. The heart, the Bible says, the heart is wicked above all things. Who can know it? Just because someone looks like you doesn't mean he has to be good to you. Good and evil has no color. And the Bible even tells you, it says, you're going to get most, most of your hatred from your own people. You know, a coach is supposed to be someone of an example. But here's the thing. You see a young man trying to do to live a righteous life. And he's showing you the society that we live in. Because he's a young man and he has an influence, they're like, we cannot not allow this young man to affect positively to other people. So we need to punish him. We need to punish him for following the laws of the most high. A dietary law that's of his Health, like we're talking about sports, right? Don't you want your players to be healthy, to be in good health? You punish. So but what they're basically showing you in the punishment saying that pork is bad. That's why we're forcing you to eat it. Because if you can, you know, if it was good, what would you force him? Because it's good. No, you force him because it's bad, right? Right? So even in their own ignorance and delusional bullying they're actually teaching for those who are smart and wise that pork is bad that's why they were forcing the young men to eat it and you see i don't want to get too deep to the rubber hole we're living in a time people the most high said it, it says it's the separating of the wheat of the tear those who want to do right you're going to be hated you're going to be persecuted you're living in a society where evil has become good and good has become evil. Nobody cares. The love of many shall wax cold. Mental illness. Think about this, right? I'm also going to make a, a video about mental illness. What if this young man gets so depressed that he takes his own life? See? And it shows you that even in our society, they don't care about male mental health, men's mental health, especially young uh, uh, African-American um, men's mental health. They don't care. They don't care about you. Just, just you know, be out of here. They, they'll be like, we'll be happy. That's the mindset. And you get most flack from who, where? From who? Your own people. That's the truth about it. It's sad, but that's the reality of things. But see, like I said, the media, they'll be, oh, racism, this. I'm like, bro, I'm like, you have no idea. That's where they want you to be, to be stuck on. Hatred has no color. Hazing has no color. Discrimination has no color. It can come from those who quote unquote look just like you. It can come from your own family. It can go, come from your own tribe, your own nation, your own citizen. So, evil is in all of us, and goodness is in all of us. Guess what? We choose when to show it and when to hide it. And to this coach, he decided to be the lesser man and bully a young man, younger than him, to break the law of his creator. You know? Now, think about this. Look at them. If this coach was loved by many, 
and the young people hear this news, what do you think is going to happen to them psychologically? Just think about it. And you notice, that's why I showed you, you know, shout out to my uh, Jewish people out there. But even they don't realize the media also uses the news to negative, negatively affect them, create tensions and stuff like that. Because how people are brainwashed is when you hear, when the, the, uh, some other, uh, other article reported, they say Jewish, to most people, they will think who? Do you think Caucasian or Orthodox, like this, this, uh, um, uh, was it a Jewish practitioner? But they will never imagine this. Do you really think when they say Jewish student who was bullied, do you think he's gonna they imagine to for for him to look like this? Hmm? Do you think they will imagine his father to look like this? No. Because why? To the masses, Jewish means Caucasian. Jewish means Prime Minister Netanyahu. And that's what I tell you. This is not because of hatred. I'm showing you how the media create tensions, how they spread propaganda and stuff like that. Why? The people are innocent. But the media... You have to be very, very careful how the media reports the news. That's that's what I, I'm I'm showing you this different aspect. So I know this video was very long because you know I wanted to talk about you know the taste of swine flesh. <laughs> it's delicious, isn't it? Right? You better eat it, young boy. Come on, you teammates, you making them suffer. Eat it, right? So I, I hope this news spreads so it can bring more awareness. And I'm also going to attach the different articles so you can read for yourself to, to basically see what I'm saying. Because sometimes seeing is believing. It's not me just spewing things out of my mouth. I, I want you to actually go to these particular articles, see the title, just like I showed you earlier, to show you the power of the media, how things can change from one place to the other. All talking the same story right now. Just think, just remember, everybody talking the same story, but some way, somehow, they all sound different. The question is, why? For what purpose? But I chose to speak on it. Why? Because my channel is called Fasting is Life, and I talk about health. And I talk about spirituality and stuff like that. You know, I promote the Bible in the Bible, you know, as people know me <laughs> here. I promote the Bible because to me, the Bible is the book of life. It has information in there that can help those who are seeking knowledge to live a way, a lifestyle that will, you know, that will have their well being, you know, in, in, in check. Right. So, there's so much I could to, to get on into this particular news, but I just wanted to point this out too. And just r realize that, you know, you know, we have a lot of things going on in the media. This news is probably going to be buried. I doubt they will talk about this on TV, uh, on major news like Fox News or something. But who knows? Maybe if more people talk about it, maybe, uh, maybe it's going to, be to the forefront to actually bring bring out our you know to understand that hey you know just because everybody else eat the same thing doesn't mean I do I have the right as an American to choose to follow what I want to you know based on my belief right we talk about tolerance right but it seems like tolerance only belongs to certain people and not others that's not right that's not justice that's no equality quote unquote you know so it's it's a it was a very interesting news you know when i heard it i'm like i gotta speak on it there is no way i'm gonna let this just fly out of my <laughs> my hands just like another news uh I, I don't know if i 
ever made about it, but basically during the whole pandemic last year, uh, there was a, 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 a in America, I think it was a, a young Caucasian guy. I don't know if you, you know, the way, the way the news was reporting, they were saying maybe he had mental illness or something, but he was on a plane screaming, says that you have to believe that Jesus is black. He said, you have to believe it. He said, Jesus was black. He was not white. And then the people jump on him. I guess he, quote unquote, was holding the airplane hostage and they jump on him. And even with that news, you had different article reporting something. They said, oh, someone was crazy, was a, a Christian fanatic, right? And some say um, a, a passenger screaming, Jesus is black, held a plane hostage. Different articles reporting on different things. Same news, but different wording of reporting. Showing you how news can be twisted, can be changed, can be manipulated for an agenda. So that's it for this particular news. I really appreciate you guys stopping by. I really, really appreciate it. So shout out to the young man uh, and to your family. I hope uh, you guys fight and resolve this. Take this to the up, you know, to the extent of the law because other people do it. And if you don't do it, they won't take you seriously. They will minimize you. And I'm actually, I was actually surprised the anti-defamation league because if for what happened to this young man, that's anti-Semitism right there. Because anti-Semitism means you are against Shemites or Semitic people. The young man is a Semite. And what this coach did to, to this young man was anti-Semitism. Will the media mention that? Will they call this anti-Semitism? Who knows? We shall wait and see. <laughs> All right, people. I really appreciate you guys stopping by. If this video was uh, interesting, please press the like button, share. I know it's a one hour long video. Most people these days, they can't even stay for two minutes. But if you've made it this far, congratulations and I appreciate it. Please make sure to like and subscribe, right? Spread the news. I really appreciate it, you know, and stay tuned for more video. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Be safe. Have a great weekend. May the most high bless you. And remember, don't eat that swine. Ha, 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 ha.